Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here live at Wikibon headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. This is the Cube, where we extract the signal from the noise, bring you the smartest people that we can find, and put, it, put the, the, the information in front of you, our audience. And it's hard to believe, but 2012 is almost come and gone. It's December 18th. This past year was the year that cloud became a reality. You remember the hype around cloud and a lot of skepticism around cloud? Well, it really became mainstream in 2012. There was a ton of action around Flash, particularly in the startup area that we, we covered extensively here at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. Converged infrastructure, which was a really a, a two or a three horse race between VCE and HP and, and Oracle. Now everybody's hopped on the converged infrastructure bandwagon. Big data is really you know, hitting its stride and there's a lot of activity there and we're, we continue to see industry consolidation and bring your own devices, all the trends. So here we are in uh, the end of 2012 and we thought it would be a good idea to look forward to 2013. So I enlisted a couple of my friends to do that. Mm -hmm. Chuck Hollis and Tom Roloff of EMC Corporation. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure to be here. Dave, thanks for the invite. So Chuck, of course, you have a lot of experience in predictions. You write a, a, a blog and every year you you know make some predictions. So we're going to tap. Some of them are actually turn out. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. <laughs> we, can, we can spend some time evaluating <laughs> yeah. the past one. Batting, batting well, let's look forward. Yeah. And Tom, we appreciate you coming in. You've got the real CIO perspective. I know you spent a lot of time uh, talking to, to IT executives. So we're going to basically uh, you know, run the gamut here. So let's, let's start with the, the macro trend. What do you, let's start with you, Chuck. What are you seeing with the, the macro trends? What are your predictions for 2013? Well, if you look at what the analysts are telling us, they're telling us IT spend in 2013 is just a little north of what we saw in 2012. So you know, resources are tight, the economy's in tight. You know, my guess is the first half of 2013 will look a lot like the second half of 2012. That being said, I think we've both seen some very hot pockets where people mm -hmm. are investing deeply. Uh, I've come across a number of healthcare providers are investing heavily. Mm -hmm. uh, certain industries are investing in mobile. So even though the aggregate picture might not be, you know, the rosiest in the world, there certainly are some hot spots. I don't know, Tom. Yep. Any yeah, no, I'd agree. I think you know, I think first of all, people are looking to shift spend. Right? I think we talked about this a little bit over the year, right? From running the business mm -hmm. and keeping the lights on to helping to create new revenue mm -hmm. streams and enabling the business in new ways. That pie has been, you know, 75-25, mm -hmm. keep the lights mm -hmm. on for a long time. And mm -hmm. I think uh, I think all enterprises and all the CIOs I'm mm -hmm. talking to is, what can I do to get that part that's keeping the lights mm -hmm. on to be more efficient? Mm -hmm. How do I free up dollars to go reinvent myself? Mm -hmm. And maybe that allows me to keep a similar size budget, mm -hmm. but to deploy it in very different ways. So uh, I think there's a you know yeah. cost reduction over here, investment over there kind of conversation going yeah. on. Yeah, the other thing I've noticed is that t tough economic times tend to accelerate transitions. Yeah. If you were thinking about investing in a new way of doing things to save money or create new value, nothing like having it be bad weather outside to make that move around a yeah, little yeah. faster. So what are you guys assuming for for IT growth? Are we talking three to four percent based on your your radar? Yeah, I think worldwide? it's gonna yeah, yeah, it's gonna vary by industry, but but I think uh, you know, low to mid single digits is kind of what everybody's uh, been telling us. Yeah. I, I'll tell you that I think uh, larger corporations um, are are trying to do more with less. Um, I see some of the, you know, smaller, medium-sized companies maybe saying, "Hey, I've got, uh, I've got opportunities to uh, really invest strongly here." Healthcare is a yeah. is a hot area Time right now. Time to double down, yeah. right? Um, so again, I don't think the aggregate pattern is particularly interesting. It's when you sort of decompose it to individual yep. industry, individual segments yep. that it really gets really yep. interesting. That's right. So my observation would be that that IT growth is really tied to to GDP now. They're much more in mm -hmm. lockstep. Mm -hmm. And so the the prediction that I would make for 2013 is the rich get richer. And what I mean by that is if you look at the IT business, it's really become an oligopoly. You've got five or six or seven mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. You know, IBM, HP, Dell, EMC and VMware, mm -hmm. Oracle, mm -hmm. Cisco, Intel and Microsoft, you put in there. Small club. That, es yeah, yeah, yeah. that essentially act as, you know, a, a, a big group of people that own a lot of the market. So We're all it, good friends. And, and, you know, guys, well, <laughs> put it this way, you all watch what each other are yeah, doing. So one closely. move, you know, the, the, you know, VMware's acquisition of NYSERA creates this ripple oh, yeah. effect. And so so I would predict that the rich get richer, richer that that oligopoly actually gains share in, in 2013. Well, certainly, you know, in constrained environments, I don't think IT customers have the ability to go out and do a lot of window shopping. You know, they've got to be able to buy prefab, ready to execute solutions. And the idea of taking six months to kind of create your own whatever, there's not a lot of, of spare resources to do that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think CIOs are sitting there saying, "Can I actually consolidate my vendor base more?" Yeah. Right? They're they're saying, Less "I've got more. I've got a lot of different uh, guys to go manage here. Mm -hmm. I uh, I want to I want to count on a few. I want to have them do more for me." 
And, uh, you know, I'm always going to experiment on the fringes here, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the core partners that I'm working mm -hmm. with, I, I can't afford to manage 20 of them. Can I get it down to, you know, five or six? You know, I put a couple of, but put SAP in your, in your bucket yeah, there. Yeah. You know, Microsoft is a part of the enterprise more mm -hmm. and more. And I think CIOs are asking themselves, you know, I'm going to need a certain apps. And then when I get down into platforms and infrastructures, mm -hmm. you know, how do I actually bet on the right guys? So yeah. let's talk about a um, an, an, uh, uh, corollary of that trend, which is service providers, right? People trying oh, yeah. to, you know, consolidate vendors. Well, mm -hmm. one way to do that is to look to a service provider mm -hmm. for a certain cloud app. So, so what are you guys seeing in the service provider space? Well, I'm seeing uh, more behaviors around, before we just assume we're going to go do this ourselves, as part of the project analysis for whatever they're doing, let's go look at external options. Whereas a year or two, I think the prevalence was, no, they're probably not going to be anything out there. If it is, we wouldn't want it. Um, but it's, you know, whether it's be a SaaS app, be infrastructure, be something, people are now uh, in purposefully going out and trying to see what the options are out there before they commit to an internal project. I don't know if you've seen some of that. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, so with a broad definition of service providers, right, including uh, software as a service, as well mm -hmm. as, you know, any workload that you might be moving somewhere else. Um, you know, a year ago, I saw a lot of fear, uh, you know, FUD uh, yeah. in, in the enterprise market around, I'm not sure I want to move all that stuff out there, I don't mm -hmm. really know. Mm -hmm. I, I think what's happened in the past year is people have done it without really asking themselves the security question. So it's it's really gone out into uh, mm -hmm. service providers, public clouds, much faster, mm -hmm. really, than it did in the, in the 2011 timeframe. I think this is the year of reckoning on that, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think the the robustness of the platform and the availability and mm -hmm. the, the the trustworthiness of the platform is going to get tested, and uh, and I think uh, CIOs are going to sit there and 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 step back from this halfway through the year and say, can I really afford to set critical workloads out to these guys, mm -hmm. or do I need to go create trusted relationships with a few service providers and, mm -hmm. and sort of double down on that in the same way that, that maybe that oligopoly we were talking about was uh, was, was yeah, doubling down but on. But back to your point, I think we both would agree that unless IT brokers that relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, service providers are your frenemies, right? They'd love to work with IT, yeah. and if they don't, they certainly know who's consuming IT, like the CMO and folks like that. So you either have to broker the relationship yeah, yeah. and manage the discussion, or buyers and sellers will find each this other. This is where you've been for a while, right? Yeah, the yeah. idea that, that Amazon or, or, or public cloud is the new shadow IT, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think uh, I think you've been saying that. I think I think uh, CIOs in the enterprise have been hearing that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I think they're really starting to ask that question right mm -hmm. now. What's actually out there in the service providers that, mm -hmm. that, that my employees are leveraging? Mm -hmm. And can I broker that? And can I, yeah. can I actually make sure that I'm comfortable with that? Because the anecdotes about getting burned are out there. And yeah. I think IT's got to get involved. Well, yeah. I think, too. So my prediction here is that Amazon's going to get a lot more aggressive in mm -hmm. the enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see that. I mean, things like Glacier is getting a lot of attention, mm -hmm. you know, the penny per gigabyte per month. Mm -hmm. That's going to catch a lot of CFOs' uh, you know, eyes and ears. But I think there's going to be another high-profile outage. And because of Amazon's big marketing push, I think people are going to be more in tune with the risks associated with Amazon's cloud. And I think that the enterprise guys, mm -hmm. you guys, your customers, VMware's mm -hmm. customers, are going to respond. And specifically, I think their response is going to be successful in areas of vertical markets. I mm -hmm. think that's where you're going to see the, the best response to the Amazon's horizontal you know, commodity mm -hmm. approaches that Certain service providers, for example, NYSE in financial services, Cerner in yeah. healthcare, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it depends on like USC in, 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 uh, in archives and other media and entertainment verticals will emerge and that's where they're going to succeed against Amazon. Well, okay, so this is the debate that we're having internally. We agree with you about vertical oriented community call uh, clouds. We can make a long list yep. of models where that would work. Uh, the coin toss, at least in my mind, is does that go to an Amazon model or will it go to a purpose-built set of cloud technologies? You mentioned Nisey Tech. They're not using an Amazon-style model, they're using enterprise-class IT. So I agree with you on the community uh, cloud side, whether it all goes to a public commodity cloud or not, I think that's kind of a separate discussion. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think large-scale uh, IT organizations mm -hmm. see infrastructure as a service, as a stepping stone, and a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to the extent that that the public cloud is uh, betting on, uh, you know, cheaper infrastructure mm -hmm. as a service, as a value prop, I think that's pretty yeah. ephemeral. And I, uh, you got to do more than that. I had a CIO just kind of nail it for me. Uh, he said, I look at Amazon and those guys as temp agencies. You know, nice to call them up when I'm short a few bodies, need a little help. Wouldn't want to build my entire workforce on temps. 
Um, and I think that we have to realize those things are now just part of the mix. They're not a substitute for a strategy, but they're an enhancement to a strategy. And knowing that there are nice variable services out there to consume adds to it. And I thought this whole uh, analogy around, uh, you know, my temp workforce was probably pretty accurate. It helps you think about it the right way. It's a spot market for IT, yeah, it's right? A, yeah. uh, it's, uh, yeah. You can get out there and, you know, get it when, when you need it, go get it. But uh, you got to ask yourself, is, uh, is that really worth uh, what you're taking on? Yeah, there? I don't know about you, but we're getting into winter here in New England. I'm not on the spot market for my heating oil. I prepaid. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so some people might try to arbitrage, but it's a dangerous yeah. game. Yeah, go there if you want. All right, let's get, get into the, the, the tech discussion, right? I mean, we all love the, to talk about the technology. Yeah. So let's start with big data. Um, I mean, you know, Gardner talks about the hype cycle. We've got to be yeah. you know, close to, if not a little bit beyond the yeah. peak of the hype cycle. What, do, what are your predictions, Chuck, in, in big data? Well, I think last year it was all about data science, data scientists, and the tools for them. I think in 2013 we'll kind of go one level down in the hierarchy and see a broadcast of uh, analytically enabled executives, managers, leaders. We're taking a subset of what the data scientists do and applying it more to business uh, business problems. You know, five data scientists is good, but I think there's room for 50, 500, even more analytically enabled managers, leaders, executives, whatever you want to call them in an organization. I call it the uh, democratization of big data in the enterprise in 2013. That's an interesting way to put it, Chuck. Yeah. I, you know, I, uh, I think that big data has been an IT push. And uh, and I think that's uh, mm -hmm. that's got to change. Oh yeah, you know I, I uh, yeah. there's we're at the top of the hype cycle from the IT mm -hmm. uh, person's perspective mm -hmm. around big data because I think every mm -hmm. every CIO believes this is a way to go become more relevant to the business, mm -hmm. but I think uh, IT needs to do more mm -hmm. to engage the business in that conversation and get the business to appreciate what's possible in mm -hmm. ways that uh, that I really haven't seen them do uh, this past year. Right? It's yeah. been a what can we aggregate and what interesting things can mm -hmm. we do with that aggregation. I think we got to get to the point where, uh, where we're turning that into less of an mm -hmm. IT push and more of, an, yeah. uh, of a business pull. I will say one thing though, uh, you know, some people wonder why don't you hear more about companies doing stuff with big data in the industry. As I meet with these folks, this stuff is R&D, it's rocket science, they don't want to be talking about this to the press, they're not going to talk to us vendors. So I've been amazed about how many people are actually doing things as opposed to the small number of people who are willing to talk about what they're doing. So I think this is actually moving a little faster, a little harder than uh, we might give ourselves yep. credit for. That's pretty fair. And sometimes it'll come under the rubric of analytics or BI, it might not be classical big data, as we'll all come to know and love it. But uh, it's the rare customer that I meet that isn't doing something in this area. So I think that, um, I guess my prediction in this area is you're not going to see a red hat of big data. And as a result, mm -hmm. I think one of the big platform vendors, mm -hmm. either Cloudera or Mapbar, is going to have mm -hmm. some kind of exit, either IPO, but I don't, I don't think they're there in terms of IPO. I just don't think the, 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 the financials are going to support mm -hmm. that. So I'm, I'm predicting one of those will get taken out. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a long shot, but uh, either Cloudera or Mapbar will get taken out. And that, that will create mm -hmm. a ripple effect because there'll be this feeding frenzy of people who think that there will be a red hat of Linux. So that's my sort of yeah, big data prediction. I, I kind of move my prediction elsewhere in the value chain. I think the action is going to be in community-based clouds doing purpose-built analytics for consumption. The travel industry, the energy industry, the healthcare industry. So you take the cloud model, you start thinking about predictive analytics and service provider models in for a particular industry. I think that party's just starting in 2013. Well, I guess the other point I would make there is there's a lack of applications, really yeah. packaged applications in big data. And and I, I think that um, rather than see a bunch of packaged applications mm -hmm. come out in 2013, I think we're going to see some platforms where people will actually produce de style things. development yeah. platforms and yeah. through APIs will actually put that infrastructure in place. I think 2013 yeah. is going to be the setup year to actually enable some mm -hmm. of those applications to be developed down the road. People want to consume the stuff. They don't want to handcraft it. And if I can go to a nice, well-lit place that has all the data and all the tools I need for my industry, plus a community of data science professionals to help me, boy, that seems a lot more attractive than spending five times as much to try to do that. Without again. having to be uh, a map reduce expert. Right. That's yep. really the, uh, yeah. the attractive. Although I'm you so. and I probably could learn R if yeah. we sat down. R, yes. <laughs> I'll put it for you that, the, that what, what you're going to see in 2013 in this space is that applications and big data are going to converge in a way that they haven't, right? If, if you're an enterprise today and you want to go consume big data, you want to insert it into a business process in real time, mm -hmm. you've got to change an application that's running the bank the way it's being run today. That, that application 
that you have that's a legacy app can't consume big data in the way you want it to, which makes big data an analytical rather than in a transactional uh, business process yeah, related right. thing. I think you're going to see that change this year. Well, interesting. I think actually just another another trend I think we'll see is that the the an, the transaction databases will start to feed the analytical databases in real time. And I think yep. you'll start to see that really take shape. You've seen it now in ad networks. I think you'll start to see it in well, more I use think, cases. I think in Tom's point is uh, pretty valid because, okay, I found my crystal ball. I now know about a new uh, business process that's analytically enabled. Let's go build one. To your point, the first thing I want to do is start sourcing data from all these legacy systems at warp speed. They weren't designed to do that. Um, I want to be doing decisioning as quickly as possible in memory, some of those technologies. And I think Tom and I would both agree, in fact, I think our executives agree that there's going to be this new cast of uh, application tools and application methodologies that don't look like what we're doing today to build these next generation predictive right. analytics. Now there's going to be some infrastructure to support that, one which is, is flash. You mentioned in memory. There's a big debate now going on about in memory versus you know memory extensions using flash mm -hmm. and the, the economics of that and the trade-offs and so forth. So let's, uh, let's start with you again, Chuck. What are you seeing in, in flash? What's your prediction there? Well, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, we've been talking about flash and storage since 2008 when we first started shipping flash drives in the, in the Symmetrics. And in 2013, I think people are going to have to think twice before they do a disk-based type storage uh, implementation. Yeah, for archival and content depots and that sort of thing. But I think everyone's going to gravitate to either all flash or mostly flash and how they think about storage going forward. The costs have come down. There's now tiering within flash. 2013, we're going to see real-time dedupe, which will get the cost down even further. Um, everybody now, anybody who's ever owned a MacBook Air knows what flash can do for your performance. Um, it's just pretty hard to stare at a disk array now and say, yeah, I can live with, you know, classical disk for this SAP process yep. or something. I don't know. You know, I think the other thing I'll predict for you that, yeah. uh, that flash will drive is that we'll start to question uh, where the value is in the storage stack, right? Is it in the fact that I've got, uh, you know, yeah. whatever, the right uh, combination of disk? Or is it in the fact that I can kind of manage and orchestrate all the different levels that mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. when I need them in real time mm -hmm. with an intelligent approach? And uh, I think Flash is taking, giving another tier to that mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and is putting a lens on uh, the software, really, that's yeah. behind what's, what storage has become. And I think in 2013, we're going to get really confused because what is a server, what is a storage array, to your point, those lines start blurring very clearly. So, you know, when we put a very modern storage proposal in people these days, there's server elements, network elements, and array elements. And all of these are going to start mushing together pretty quickly here. Right. Um, you also see this reflected organizationally. I see server and storage teams starting to come together. It used to be the storage guys over on one side and the server guys on the other side. They never went to lunch together. Um, now they're having to come together because these technologies are meshing very, very tightly. Yeah, and I think that um, I think you're going to see the redefinition of the classical tier one reliability, availability, uh -huh. serviceability. That's morphing yeah. with this tier zero and and it's you know multi-tenancy, mixed workloads, and, and I think that uh -huh. Flash is going to start to drive new levels of productivity, bottom line uh -huh. productivity to the organization yeah. as opposed to just cost. And there's a whole bunch of things that we had to learn in the disk world, like storage data placement on disk drives. It just don't exist in Flash. So you know, at least we'll find at least the storage professionals are going to have to unlearn a lot of stuff and relearn the things that are now important in this new world. Okay, how about security? Um, Tom, let's start with you. Any, any, what's your crystal ball say about security in 2013? You know, I think, uh, I think security has been this, uh, this term that's about, uh, you know, how do I, first of all, secure the data center was a conversation. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about identity and access management mm -hmm. to information. I think we're broadening the definition of security uh, significantly, and I think enterprises are starting to look at maybe not just security, mm -hmm. but trust in the information infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people are using terms you know, around uh, business continuity, disaster recovery, mm -hmm. backup, recovery, and archiving as part of a broader conversation about how I secure my information. So I think you'll see that conversation shift to, uh, to an extension of backup, recovery, business continuity, d disaster uh, remediation, mm -hmm. identity management, access management, security mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of information security, and ultimately also compliance mm -hmm. and how we prove to people that we're actually living by mm -hmm. the policies and the regulatory environments that we're all under. So I think that conversation gets much broader in yeah. 2013, and I think uh, CIOs and, and CISOs are going to start uh, taking that on together. You know, I look at it kind of the same way Tom does, but from a different angle. You know, we've all built business models in the physical world, and we've learned how to protect and secure yeah. and, and supply chains and all of that. We're reconstructing those same business models in the digital world around social and mobile and analytics and all of that. We need to be able to do business with the same confidence that we used to do it in the physical world. So, yes, it's security, but it's also availability and compliance and all these other things. You know, my business is now a digital business. Can I do 
business yeah. with confidence yeah. and trust. If I were to double click on security, the big thing that I've seen is everybody, using different words, but it's basically big data analytics meets security. Can I use the same predictive techniques for using consumer behavior and energy distribution and all these other great business processes to better predict and react to the next security threat that's out there? And uh, the security crowd is kind of interesting. They always, you know, they're a little different. They want to use different words and concepts. And they hate it when I say, oh, yeah, you're just doing data science. You're just kind of doing it in a different area. Uh, they're very offended. They always like to use different words. But you are seeing that gross importing of concepts and methodologies from the data science world into the security world. It's happening pretty fast. Mm -hmm. All right, here's my layup prediction. I'm going to get yeah. to the end of 2013. We're going to look back and say, oh, we're less secure than we were at the end of 2012. My question, Chuck, is will it matter? Yeah, I don't think we'll care. Um, it's kind of funny. We've been talking about privacy and security and bad things happening for at least as long as I've been in computers, which is 30 years. Uh, every year the risks get greater, and every year we, we seem to care about it less. I think there'll be more of a narrowing and focusing on the risks that matter as opposed to avoiding all risks. If you look at security thinking four or five years ago, it's, oh my gosh, we've got to prevent everything everywhere all the time. Now it's like, well, we kind of presume somebody's inside our network, we kind of presume bad things are happening. How do we focus on the things that matter? So I think we'll care less, but the things we do care about, we're going to care about a whole lot. Yeah, I'd add, you know, the one yeah. the one thing in there is that the regulatory environment across the world is heating up. Yeah. And the things we're going to care about are things that land us in jail. And so we are going to worry. We are going to worry about that part <laughs> of the broad conversation. Well, I yeah. think it underscores, too, that the business value of these initiatives really brings enough ROI to offset some of the, the risks and concerns. So. Yeah. Um, so more of the same there, although we're starting to see, as you say, the, the widening of the notion of security uh -huh. and really trying to attack mm -hmm. the problem from a data standpoint as opposed to just putting a wall around the queen when she wants to leave That's the That's not going to work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about IT organizations. Tom, this yeah. is something that you spend, maybe just or business technology organizations, yeah. I should call it. You, you spend a lot of time sort of at the intersection of business yeah. and technology. So what, what are you seeing for 2013? I'm going to get two, like I'm gonna need two, uh, two trends there. One is that I think you know, with cloud trust and big data, people are realizing this is not just a technology revolution. This is people, process, and technology. Mm -hmm. And that affects the way we run IT. That affects mm -hmm. the way we organize IT. That affects the skill sets we need in IT. Mm -hmm. I think as cloud and security and big data become more pervasive, people are re-examining the way that they organize and run mm -hmm. IT, and I think you're going to see that really take off next year. There's some tremendous technologies out there now. As they get mm -hmm. absorbed and mainstreamed, it's going to change the way uh, the way that people uh, take on the process and mm -hmm. organizational side of IT. Um, I've kind of seen that already happen. I mean, a year ago we were talking, hey, you're going to need new technology infrastructure to go do this. I think by now everybody realizes you need a new operational model and a new consumption model to go with it. And those are the hard parts because that's people, process, and politics, yep. right? Yep. Not easy. Um, that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a sense of deja vu here. You know, we are very proud of ourselves. Hey, cloud, information as a service, blah, blah, blah. Remember what we used to call IT organizations back in the 60s and 70s? IS information services. That's where the information came from the business needed to do it. So I almost see, a, you know, we're coming around the lap again that it's not about the technology in IT, it's about the services that the business needs to consume to run their next business model. So you know, maybe we are going back to the mainframe again. Yeah, I mean, I love, the, uh, <laughs> I, I love the idea, you know, and I think yeah. uh, maybe to play off your ISIT yeah. world, I think the focus in 2013 is going to be on the I in IT. Yeah. And the consumption model isn't through technology, it's delivering it as a service that everybody wants to consume, right? right. So, okay, so I would add to that, we always talk about the 70-30 mix, 70% of IT investments mm -hmm. are spent keeping the lights mm -hmm. on, 30% on innovation. Mm -hmm. I think we get out of that morass where w by the CMO is actually going to drive the information agenda mm -hmm. uh, and actually, as it relates to innovation, actually mm -hmm. spend more on innovation than the IT organization itself. So that would be my uh, organization. I would certainly agree CMOs are forcing functions. So you know, put it all together. It's a digital world. We need a digital business model. Typically, the marketing function is the one that's all into the social and the mobile and the analytics and all that. At least what's happening in our mm -hmm. organization. So they're now coming to the IT guys and saying, look, I need to get a whole bunch of stuff done here really fast. It's not what you guys did two years ago. You know, We're either going to join together in a very tight partnership or we're going to part ways right about now. And uh, I like forcing functions. At the same time, I meet IT organizations that are looking to do new things in a new way with a new part of the organization. So in many ways, the marketing function becomes the first anchor tenant for the cloud, for the analytics, all of that. So I'm seeing kind of a, hey, we're trying to do things new way, and we got a guy here who needs things done new ways. We use this as the basis for reinventing how we do IT in our organization. 
and uh, it's great when you see it. I don't know. Any other thoughts? Yeah, no, I, uh, I think uh, starting with a customer and uh, thinking back to what that means you need from an information mm -hmm. perspective is a great way to go. And I think uh, marketing is trying to get that, you know, what's the 360 review of our customer mm -hmm. and how do we understand that customer better? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a natural place yeah. for, uh, for that, that big data and aggregation of information yeah. to be. And I think uh, it'll create a lot of value in the enterprise if, if marketing can start the ball rolling in that direction. Yeah, and uh, at least I've seen it in, in our company and other companies as well. That partnership not only feeds what marketing needs to get done very quickly, but also is the first anchor tenant that encourages IT to deliver yeah. new classes yeah. of services in new ways. So it's a win-win when you find it. Excellent. Okay, last, I'll give you guys the last word. Actually, I'll give myself the last word. I'm going to start with you, sure, though, sure. Chuck. So, um, <laughs> surprises in 2013 or any, any you know, last predictions that you'd like to make? Um, I think I put most of them in my blog. Um, I think what we always get surprised with is how fast this is all happening around us. Uh, I'll point to the Digital Universe study, and I don't know if you tracked what IDC did. Yeah, uh, a year ago, yeah, week. a year ago they said, well, we're going to be at uh, by the end of the decade we're going to be at 35 zettabytes. Last year they said, no, no, we were wrong. By the end of the decade we're going to be at 40 zettabytes. So look at this: in one year, they've taken their forecast for the end of the decade up five zettabytes. So we keep undershooting how quickly all this stuff is happening by an order of magnitude, and that's what impresses me. Just as you know, how quickly we get this wrong and move on to the next thing. Uh, you know, my, my prediction, and I won't get very specific about this, yeah. but I think, uh, I think what you're seeing is uh, the acceleration of technology. There are some firms, yeah. and we talked about yeah. a bunch of them in the beginning, right, who are the trusted uh, IT firms for the enterprise. Some are keeping up and some are not. And I think yeah. 2013 will see uh, the, the winner take all, as you suggested early on. Um, uh, we'll see an example of how that really happened. You know, we saw it with uh, Oracle buying Sun a few years ago. Mm -hmm. We saw the beginnings of a, of a you know, winners and uh, consolidators and consolidates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to see at least one of those companies that you mentioned early on uh, be in a very different corporate structure by the end of uh, by the end of 2013. All right, big prediction. Okay, I would say just picking up on that theme, Tom, that 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 software is going to be the the defining characteristic of those winners. And we, you know, we call it at Wikibon so again, a software-led infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I know VMware calls it software-defined. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually going to happen a lot faster than people realize. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it's more than just marketing. And I think that you know, the basic premise is you're layering services on top of commodity mm -hmm. and standardized hardware. Mm -hmm. That's really nothing new. I mean, Google's been doing that for a decade. Mm -hmm. What is new is the metadata management. I think that people are going to mm -hmm. begin to realize that unifying metadata and, and actually having a single control point across the the network mm -hmm. that's really going to be server led mm -hmm. managing data from fast servers is is going to mm -hmm. be a, a tectonic shift that we're going to start to see emerge in 2013 so so keep your eye on that uh, gentlemen thank you very much for coming on the cube and making this really easy for me um, <laughs> really appreciate you uh, sharing your insights with our community this is Dave Vellante at wikibon.org this is the cube thanks for watching everybody we'll see you next time